Now, before we begin, if you haven't seen our brand spanking new video showing you all the wonderful things that are available for your viewing pleasure here on Head Squeeze, then you can do so now by clicking here. First though, how do magnets work? Although we think of magnets working with metals, technically ferromagnetism, all objects are subject to magnetic forces, although often to very tiny degrees. Indeed, as the electromagnetic force, magnetism is vital to keeping the universe together. It's one of the fundamental natural interactions and keeping it apart, of course, that being how physics works. But when we think of magnets, we're talking about the things that align iron filings on a piece of paper or stick pictures of cats to your fridge. A magnet is just something, normally metal, that has a particularly well-organized magnetic field. In most objects, the natural state of these tiny magnetic domains, as they're called, is essentially random, with their north poles pointing in different directions. The upshot being, in layman's terms, that they cancel each other out. But in a magnet, most or all of these magnetic domains line up in the same direction. And rather than cancelling each other out, the tiny magnetic fields combine to form a big aligned magnetic field. And the more of them there are, and the denser the material, then the stronger the magnetic field will be. Despite all the uses we found for magnets in the modern world, they started out as little more than a neat party trick. The ancient Greeks took time out from animal sacrifice and what have you to discover the force of magnetism about two and a half thousand years ago through naturally magnetic lodestones. The Chinese discovered the same phenomenon at about the same time. Indeed, the name magnet is probably due to the prevalence of lodestones around the Greek city of Magnesia in what is now modern Turkey. Yet it took another thousand years for magnetism to discover its killer app. Because the naturally occurring magnets were both heavy and relatively weak, they weren't of much use. But in the early Middle Ages, some forgotten genius discovered that if you ran a magnet along another metal object enough times, you would create a new magnet. And as we now know, this is because the magnetic force acts to align the magnetic domains in the new object as well. At the time, this was probably put down to witchcraft. But we now know that at a subatomic level, magnetism is the result of unpaired electrons. Since paired electrons have to spin in opposite directions, you're just gonna have to take my word for this, it's one of the fundamental tenets of quantum mechanics. But since they spin in opposite directions, their magnetic fields cancel each other out. But some materials have unpaired electrons with the same spin, creating tiny orbital magnetic moments. Multiply this by several billion trillion and you have the reason why a sewing machine needle will jump several centimeters against the force of gravity to stick to a hovering magnet. Anyway, back to the 1100s and time to consider the stupendously convenient fact that the Earth happens to be pretty much a huge magnet as well, with its own magnetic field giving it magnetic north and magnetic south poles. So your freshly magnetized piece of metal would, if left to its own devices, line itself up with the Earth's own magnetic field. The compass needle had been invented, instantly becoming the single most important navigational tool that we possess even in the age of sat-nav. Subsequently, other ways of making magnets were discovered. You can take a piece of magnetic material and leave it in a magnetic field for a very long time. Or you can use the miracle of electricity and make an electromagnet. One of the problems with permanent magnets is that they're on all the time. So you could use one to clear up metal cuttings in a machine shop, for example, but then you'd have to get the metal cuttings off the magnet. An electromagnet can be turned off if you run a current through a wire, you will create a tiny magnetic field around it. If you make a tight coil of wire, this effect will be increased. It will be increased further if you wrap that coil of wire around a dense magnetic material, like iron. When you turn the current on, you've got a very powerful magnet. Turn it off, and it's just a piece of iron. Handy for picking things up and dropping them off, like scrap cars. No good for picking up a pile of fridge magnets, though, because they're permanent magnets. So when you turn the current in the electromagnet off, it's still a piece of iron and that's magnetic. So the fridge magnets will stick to it. Bah. 